Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with the Xiaomi 360 degree action camera. They're now calling this the Sphere. So they've added a uh, name to the title that we didn't have last week. And this video is a follow up because I found some bugs in the iOS app that I was using when I did the initial review that dramatically reduced the video quality going up to YouTube and Facebook, but using Android results in a very different experience. I wanted to show you uh, some image examples of that and uh, what I did to rectify the situation, which was mainly just getting Getting an Android device versus an iOS device. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this did come in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this follow-up and no one has reviewed this content before it is posted. So let's take a look and see what we got working here. Now, you'll recall from my initial review that things looked really muddy in YouTube here. So I'm playing back right now uh, the footage that I initially uploaded that I exported out of my iPhone. You can see that things really don't have a lot of detail to them. Uh, it's really just a big mushy mess here. And I noted at the time that uh, it looked like the video file was significantly compressed over the original. So in fact, the uh, iPhone output was about four megabits per second, whereas the recording off the camera was running at 40 megabits per second. Hence, we had a pretty significant reduction in quality. And then a viewer was watching and pointed me to this video, which is from 360rumors.com. And I noticed that his video was a lot sharper than mine, and I couldn't figure out uh, why that was. I reached out to him, and he mentioned that the only real difference between how he processed his videos versus how I did mine uh, was that he used the Android app and I used the iPhone app. So sure enough, I uh, went over to the Android devices I have here in the house and I got a much sharper image. Let me go back to this one spot in time here so you can get a feel for uh, the differences here. So here you've got that car coming by here. You can see just how fuzzy everything looks here. And if we go back to uh, this image here, you can see that it is a lot sharper, primarily because I was able to upload a video file that was actually closer to the original. It's still not as good as what he uploaded Loaded, but I think part of the problem here with me walking is that I didn't use a stabilizer like uh, he was using. So my uh, image is moving around a little bit more, which is going to display more uh, imperfections perhaps in the image. But it is a lot nicer uh, than what we had before here. So clearly using the Android app uh, will make a difference as you are uploading your videos. And I also noticed that Facebook was a lot better too after uploading that revised file, which is no surprise because we are uploading a file with a lot more video data in there. So you can see uh, how much sharper those tree leaves and everything else look on there. In fact, it looks a little nicer than YouTube looked. Uh, here's what the video looked like before on Facebook. And I'll just fast forward to that tree portion there. And you can see it is a pretty big difference here between uh, the old one and the new one. A lot sharper on the new file here uh, and more in line with what I would expect from a camera at this price point. The nice thing about Facebook is that uh, it tends to display videos in a smaller window. So when you are uh, taking videos like this and putting it into a smaller space, things look sharper. So I think it's uh, actually not too bad of a uh, Facebook experience here if you are planning to share a lot of your 360 videos with uh, friends on that platform. So the image actually looks pretty, pretty good now. I was pretty surprised to see how all of that works. Now, I did want to switch gears a little bit though and just show you the process that you have to go through to export these videos. I described it before, uh, but I figured it would be kind of fun to just walk through it now that we have a little bit more time to explore this. And unfortunately, the video export process on this camera uh, is really arduous, but there are some ways that you can tweak things to make it go a little bit faster. Let's take a look at that. All right, so we're taking a look right now at the Android version of the app. It looks identical to what we saw with the iOS version, except as we just saw, it actually exports better quality video when you're done with all of your image processing. And uh, what I've got on here right now are a bunch of images that I brought over from the camera earlier. And I brought those over via Wi-Fi. The problem is the Wi-Fi transfer takes forever, uh, but they did put on a little button here at the top, at least on the Android version, called Import. Now, what I did to get the file on here was I took the card out of the camera. I put the card inside the SD card slot on my tablet here, and then I used a file manager to move the file over to the device. And uh, where you want to put the file is in a folder called MADV360, which is going to be in uh, your camera folder on your Android device. You'll see in there uh, the DCIM folder. You'll see a folder called MADV360. And if you put the file in there and then go over to the device and click import, and then you'll see that file showing up here. So if I tap on this one and then uh, go over here to import, 
uh, what will happen here is it will add it now to my uh, list of files and now I have this file here uh, on the app. So I'll hit uh, the play button here. My thing just uh, rotated the wrong direction and you can see now we've got a 360 file that I shot out in my yard earlier and I didn't have to go through that uh, really long process of bringing that file in via Wi-Fi. This is a 500 megabyte file. It took forever. I couldn't even get it to finish. So uh, this process made it a lot quicker. But you may be asking, why do you even need to bring the file over to the tablet in this complicated way? And the reason is, is that uh, this app is the only app that can process the image properly because right now in 360 degree camera world, uh, there is no standard for how this stuff works. So when you take the file off the camera, you get what you're about to see right here, which is basically the output of uh, both of the image sensors on the camera. And if you were just to upload this to uh, YouTube or Facebook, this is what you would see. You actually have to have some uh, image processing and stitching going on here to bring these two files together, or these two images together. And that is what this app does. It'll take that file that we just saw, it'll play it back in real time if we want stitched together, or I can go up here and use the editing function, which is not available on the uh, iPhone version of the product here and uh, snip out portions of the video. And then when I'm ready to uh, get this video set for upload, I can go up here and click save. So let me just trim off a little bit from the beginning perhaps, and then uh, click save here. And what this is going to do is then uh, go through the process of exporting the video into something that we can work with. And it will look like what you see here. And I say work with because there's still one more step that YouTube and Facebook need to know that this is a file that you can scroll around with versus just a flat video. And uh, what will happen here is that if we were to upload this processed file right now from this camera, uh, this is what we would get on YouTube. We would not get something we can scroll around. We just get this big re rectangular mess here. So uh, YouTube actually has a free piece of software called the Spatial Media Metadata Injector. And if you've been trying to upload 360 video and are failing either to YouTube YouTube or Facebook, uh, this piece of software will likely solve your problem because what it's going to do is take that uh, flattened out file, which now is in a standard format, and just tell YouTube and Facebook that it is a 360 file. So all you have to do here is click open, go to your processed file, uh, click on inject metadata because we're not doing 3D or uh, any spatial audio here just yet in the consumer world. And then I'll just click on save here. It's going to make a copy of the file called injected. And what that means is that it just has the uh, little pointer that it needs for those two uh, services and maybe others to know that this is a 360 file so you can play it back on Facebook. So nothing is easy these days with spherical video, unfortunately. And uh, what you just saw here with this camera is kind of indicative of where uh, the industry is. Everybody's got different software. None of it's very good. Uh, this one was equally frustrating because uh, you had to work with Android or iOS apps and there wasn't a PC app at the time that I shot this review and there still isn't one now. I think if there was a computer app, I would uh, be a little more enthusiastic about this camera because I really like the form factor. I like how thin it is because that uh, reduces some of the messiness when you stitch the images together. There's not much distance here between the two lenses, especially when you're uh, looking at it from the side here. So it really is a, a nice designed uh, piece of hardware, but uh, the software is still lacking and quite frustrating to have to uh, go through all of these steps just to get something up to Facebook for your friends to take a look at. Now, there is some uh, connectivity with Facebook through their app. So that might uh, speed things up a little bit with Facebook. But if you are trying to put stuff on YouTube at the time that I'm shooting this video, uh, there is no YouTube stuff built in and you have to go through the process that I just showed you here. But I did want to let you know that there have been some improvements to uh, video quality, at least in my uh, experimentation with the device here. So I will say it will look a lot better than you saw in that initial video. And hopefully this was a good uh, way for you to get an idea as to what to expect if you were to pick this up yourself. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, Brian Miller, Mr. Morse, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.